Hello, Grandmaster Herbert Ware with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel. Welcome once again. As always, I want to thank everyone for your support, your viewing of our um, videos. I ask that you subscribe. You press the notify button, the subscribe button, so you're notified when we have a new video. And also tell a friend. Now, uh, we do have a couple of books. I always do my commercials. Unlocking the Secrets of Freemasonry, Blue Lodge Holy Bible Reference Guide. This is available on Amazon. It is a dynamic piece of literature designed to help those that want to lecture or just study Freemasonry. This Masonic Maturity Through Scripture is also on Amazon. Now, this book is going to help you in what we're going to talk about tonight, and that is attitudes, feelings, and so forth. So this is a very good book. This book takes you from out in the rain all the way to what we call the Holy of Holies. Now, what is all of that for? It's to make us better. What is this man's, men's conference for? To make us better. Manhood 2024, Taking Back Our Position. This is a conference we are sponsoring June 29th from 9.30 to 12.30, and it is going to be power-packed. If you want to create an upward spiral, if you want to see increase, you want to get your attitude straight, you want to rethink where you are in your position, and have some good, solid information to make decisions, like decisions on, this conference is going to be it. You will leave inspired and excited. You will also leave with uh, the makings of a strategy for your life. And then we're going to try and show you how to put it all together so that you have control of your life. You see, no one else should have control. So this conference is going to be designed to make a man strong and make the man, get the man to do what is right by himself, his community, his family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to get your life back on the right track, this is a good place to start. We're going to cover some very important topics. Now, to the, today, we're going to talk about feelings and how they feed fear, okay? This is a, a part two to what I did the other week, the other day, because feelings really trip us up all the time. Feelings are de defined as emotional, an emotional state or reaction to something. Feelings can really mess you up. Now, feelings can also work in your advantage. You see, all things work together for the good. What we have to do is find the right feelings, give them some power, and then move. However, most of us find the wrong feelings, and it stifles us. It hinders us. It keeps us from moving forward. You see, feelings happen in the mind, and the emotions feed those feelings. So consequently, whatever happens, whatever we're experiencing, we attach feelings to it, and it, then it gets magnified. Now, that's good and bad. So what we have to do is grab a hold to the good and let them be multiplied. Which comes first, feelings or emotions? Hey, feelings come first. And then they're fed by the emotions. So again, what you want to do is identify the good feelings. You don't want to deal with the bad feelings. Uh, happiness, sorrow, worry, all of those are feelings. Why am I talking about feelings? Because feelings are intangible. Again, feelings happen in the mind. So we gotta have control of our mind. We gotta be able to direct it or redirect it. See, emotions enhance our feelings, which often lead to wrong or bad decisions, even if we know better. 
the feelings kind of take over. So, and everyone has something that, hey, we, we're fearful of, we don't want to deal with, we don't enjoy dealing with, and those feelings, again, magnify themselves, which makes it worse, okay? So the thing to do is to overcome the fear. Now, we were born with two innate fears, fear of falling and fear of loud noises. Everything else has been taught. Everything else, all of our other fears have been learned, okay, as we grew older. Understand, you are the point within the circle. The circle is your environment. So in that environment, we have family, we have friends, we have spouses, we have TV, radio. All of these entities and people are constantly telling us what we can't do, shouldn't do, and how bad things are going to be. So what we have to do, again, is take control of our vessel and move forward. What is the enemy of fear? Because we already know fear is our enemy. And the enemy of our enemy is our friend. So what friend do we have to combat fear? It's faith. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Here's the thing. Faith will guide you regardless of what the circumstances are. Faith have you continually going in the spite of obstacles and problems and what ifs, okay? So you got fear and you got faith. And what you have to do is choose one of them. Fear of people, fear of criticism. Those are two of the major fears that people possess. And again, Fear is the enemy of faith. Fear uses distraction and comfort to shut you down. Faith says, nope, stay focused. Do not sit down. Move. That's what it's all about. If we do not sit down, we, const we stay focused, and we're constantly moving, then we're in good shape. We will overcome. <coughs> what I'm trying to say is this. Old folks used to say, inch by inch, anything is a cinch, okay? Or they would say, if you take one step, God will take two. But you got to take the step. And you take that step in faith, okay? You've got to take that step in faith. Now, again, in the world today, we have a lot of males and, and not many men. So... It's hard to find a man that can make a decision and stand firm on it and then go after it with full faith because everything in that circle is telling him or you or me why we can't do it, why we shouldn't do that, what bad is going to happen. But faith says don't worry about it. I was reading and started reading another book that was recommended to me. I think I read it before, but hey, I don't know. But it talked about the other self. The other self, there is no other self. It's the spirit. The spirit tells you to do not sit, move, stay focused. That is what we have to do. That is the best, one of the best combats against fear. Now, when it comes down to Freemasonry, Freemasonry is, <laughs> fear is not part of being a Mason, okay? And Masonry will point out all of your uh, fears and weaknesses. Freemasonry will expose your fears and your free and your weaknesses. If you fear people, guess what? You join the Masonic Order, you're going to be in front of people. What are you going to do? You fear criticism? Okay, now you got to get up and do like I'm doing, talk in front of people. What are you going to do? You're afraid of being criticized. So Freemasonry will expose your weaknesses and your fears. 
Are you selfish? Are you uh, arrogant? Are you stingy? You, are you a charlatan? It's going to expose all of that. It's going to expose every bit of our weaknesses and our fears. So what you have to do, and this is what men do, coming into the Masonic Order, they step up and say, I want to be a better man. Okay. All well and good. We accept that. I'll go into a little bit more detail as to what you think a better man is, but I'll accept that. Now, are you willing to stand steadfast and go and focus and do? Because we've seen a lot of men come in and say, I want to be a better man, and then they cower down and act like males, children, because it's hard. Being a man has never, ever been easy. In fact, I like what Chris Rock says. He says, dogs, children, and women are the only ones, the creatures that have unconditional love. A man is not unconditionally loved. A man is loved for what he provides. In days of old, men were hunters. When they got out up in the morning, they would get two biscuits and a canteen of water, and then they had to go out and find dinner. If they didn't get dinner, family didn't eat. Men were hunters. Today, we might not. You look around, you be the judge. I, my opinion, we don't have hunters today. We have very few hunters. So we gotta, we gotta get that back. That's why this conference is talking about taking back our position, being in charge, of what is going on in our life. The point is you. The circle is your environment. And that circle should be expanding as we grow older, as we get wiser. So the point within the circle, and we control what is in the circle. Now, here, of course, you've heard false evidence appearing real. That's why I say faith is its enemy. And if faith is the enemy of fear, then it's my friend. Because faith is going to help me get what I am focusing on, in on. Here's three steps to eliminate fear or to conquer it. Number one, stay grounded in the truth. You've got to be reading. You've got to read the Bible. You need some positive books you need some videos, you need uh, positive music, okay? So you gotta have, you gotta constantly put something good in the mind because again, fear is a conscious situation. It's conscious, it's the conscious mind that's telling you, oh no, you can't do that. So you gotta stay grounded in truth, okay? It's best the best source of power and encouragement is, I think, the Holy Bible. Now, yes, you can get Masonic maturity through Scripture. You can get Think and Grow Rich. You can get Magic of Thinking Big. You can get 12 Laws of Success. You can get a whole bunch of books. However, I think you're going to find all of what those books say in the Bible. 1 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God gave us a spirit of not, a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. And so that's what we do. The second thing you have to do is talk to a friend. You need a mentor. You need somebody that's on your side. Somebody that's good for you, good with you, to you, and for you. If the answer is not yes on all of those, then you need to cut them loose. Remember, you got the circle. So you want to definitely make sure the right people are in your circle. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Older men are known for their gray hair, which is wisdom. Younger men are known for their strength which is, makes them a warrior. 
older women likewise should be uh, reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not slaves to wine and hard drinks, and they should teach what is good. So you need a mentor. The third thing is to replace your fear. And that's what I was talking about earlier. With books, with videos, attending conferences and seminars that constantly feed you the way, the food that you need here and here. That's what you need to do. Go on a positive diet. James 1 and 2, uh, James 1.22 says, be the doers of the word, not just hearers, deceiving yourselves. Because if you just hear it, you're deceiving yourselves. And then Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, do not grow weary in well-doing. To me, what that, what that is saying is step by step, by step, by step. Inch by inch, anything's a cinch. We can get it done if we do not grow weary. So come on now, let's get this thing together. Let's get our manhood back and let's move forward so that we are happy and we make all those within our circle happy. I want you to aim high, never quit, and expect to win. Thank you very much.